What's up, guys? This is JAG, aka Leonidas, coming at you live from where? From 300, that's right. On this video, we're going to be showing you how to pick the very best war deck. So, you go from uh, obviously, if you're here, you're either having trouble picking a war deck, or you're maybe a little unsure of picking a war deck, or maybe you just need some more tips, or you're just curious. But today, I'm going to be showing you how to pick the very best war deck. It's going to be broken down into six steps as well, and we're going to go and outline all of those. So just to start off a little bit, I just wanted to show you, uh, actually, if you had uh, just coming back, you've probably noticed that if you've seen some of the videos before, we were at Silver League uh, one, and we are now at Silver League 2 since uh, we came first in the last one. Also, I just want to show, currently I've played about 13 more matches. I'm at 10 wins out of those 13. Uh, I think roughly around 13. I think it is 13. And then what I wanted to kind of outline is that to start off, my first war that I played, I won the first one, but then I won lost the next two. And I'm pretty competitive, so I'm like, you know what? This is ending, I'm designing and making an outline of how I'm going to make some decks. So what I did is I then, with the six steps that I'm going to be outlining, basically designed my deck every single time. And as a result, I've then went nine and uh, one at that point. One, nine, and then lost one, and uh, the one was just a couple wars ago, I think, as well. So let's jump into this, and you're going to see how to make the very best war deck. So first off, let's go to war here. And uh, as you can see right now, uh, not in a bad position, uh, fourth place uh, and just a couple off, still very early in war. I think we'll probably be able to bring that up. We generally do a, a last push and get up to uh, generally top two range. So let's go to the war deck uh, building site here. And this is, as you can see, this is the deck that I currently used for this war. And I'll actually be showing that replay after so you can kind of understand uh, everything or see the fruits of the labors of the six steps that I'm going to be outlining. So the first one that I really want to do, step one, is know your style of play. So for me, uh, well, know your style. So basically, are you a counterattacker, which is what I fall under? Are you a beatdown uh, deck kind of person? Do you uh, are you good with spam decks like the huts, putting like the uh, barbarian hut and then the goblin hut? You really got to know your style and then cater that deck to your style. That is a crucial element that you should all know. Cater the deck to your style, which really comes into the idea of whether you use clan-based generic decks, like someone who's put one on the clan and then you use that, or if you use your own customizable deck. I highly recommend using your own customized deck, unless for some reason someone's deck is just earning everyone wins, then you know what? you have my uh, okay at that point to go and use that deck but otherwise customize them to your style the next thing the step two is know your card levels and know or and consider upgrading cards for war so for example I know what cards I have upgraded high level I have the e-barbs here that are upgraded high level I have my uh, Executioner and Tornado, which are high. My Fireball is high. My Knight is high. So I really kind of cater that to around my deck. Now, it really doesn't matter when you're kind of in silver, at least if you've been playing this game for a while. A fair amount of your card levels will still be high enough to cover that range, but soon you're going to be a little bit out of that. But just keep that in mind. Try and pick uh, cards that essentially work for you and also the higher level cards. That's one thing to keep in mind. You want to pick, obviously this is doesn't need to be said, but pick the higher level cards out of the whole collection of cards that you can uh, choose from. And the other thing is consider upgrading cards that will complement your deck for that war. For example, the Dark Goblin here. I had him at level six actually, no, level seven, and I figured he would be perfect for my deck since it gives me a little bit of a fast-paced card that does a lot of damage if he locks onto the tower and also does aerial damage and has a pretty decent range. So, you know what? Upgraded on level 8. Smart move on my part. I was very happy about that. But I generally upgrade almost one carded uh, a war, which unfortunately does cost me in my ladder pushing deck because I can't upgrade cards there as regularly, which I pretty much haven't in the past bit because they've been all going to war. But consider that. This goes to step 3. Know the typical types of cards uh, that should always be in your deck. So, a generic, any deck of war, I generally try and match this up, and it really does work well. The first thing of that generic deck is one building. 
you should always have one building card in your war deck. For me, that was the uh, Tombstone. It's a cheap elixir card that can drag a P.E.K.K.A., that can drag a Golem, that can drag a lot of troops over if you need to. A Prince as well does great against it. Mini P.E.K.K.A. also counters it, and it's three elixir. You can really get a lot of bang for your buck this way. The next is try and have one to two spell cards. You always want one to two, whether it be a rocket, whether it be a lightning, whether it be arrows, tornado, fireball, any of those. Like you saw, I took the combo of tornado and I threw it with the executioner, which, which worked really well. But I also have the fireball. If I really need that end of game kind of toss just to get that last tower or to get that win, it's a crucial one as well. But rocket and lightning also work well. I just kind of prefer the, the lighter elixir because I try and go around a 3.8 to 4 elixir range, which is what I suggest you guys roughly go around. Again, depends on your style, but that style and that elixir, average elixir cost works well for me. Okay, so this, uh, oh, and then after that, so you have one building, one to two spells. The next one is you want two cards that are air attackers and what I mean by that is they can either attack air or ground but as long as those two cards can hit air then at least it gives you a bit of option if there is an air push uh, or an air deck that you're facing you can counter that and for me that goes into the dark goblin and the executioner and as you see right there both of those cards work well for me and not to mention they both attack the ground as well so you know what it works perfectly at that point well all of them I guess attack ground and air but <laughs> I took, chose those two because they complemented my deck well in that case. And the last thing I suggest as far as what should be in your deck is three ground cards. They should at least be more maybe like a beefy style or something that gives you a little bit offensive punch. So for me, I chose the Knight because it's on a defensive style. I can use them kind of as um, in front of the E-barbs that can also kind of uh, act as a defense while they destroy troops as well. I took the E-barbs because they are offensive punch. I can use them as a counter attack, say against the hog, or even just on defense as well. And then I took the prince because if they have that elixir, I get the elixir drop on them where I have a little bit more, I'm dropping that prince on the other side and I'm countering and I'm getting that tower, which you're going to see me do, uh, I believe in the replay as well. So keep those in mind. So that's one building, one to two spells, uh, two cards that can tack air as well, and then roughly three ground troops as well. And that's kind of what I go for that. So this moves on to step four. That's going to be pick cards you're good with. For example, me, I am good with the knight. I know how to use the knight. I know how to defend against the miner with the knight, the mortar with the knight. It's in my ladder deck. I can use it offensively. The knight works for me. The other one, I'm good with fast-paced cards. So I knew the dark goblin work, work well with me. The e-barbs, they're also in my ladder deck. I'm good with them. I've used the tornado and executioner combo before. I know I have the fireball in my current deck. The prince I used a long time ago, but I was pretty good with it. I'm good with the fast pace cards, less so with the kind of like the big high elixir cards like Golem. So I try to incorporate those into my deck. So consider doing that as well. Again, that goes with the step one, which is know your style. So pick cards for that. All right, so this moves on to the next step, step five, and that's going to be customize the deck to meet all these criteria. So once you have, you know, all those steps, you want to kind of customize it to meet your criteria. So the first one, like we said, was know your style. Once you know your style two, you know, your card levels, what you have, what is good in the deck that you can choose from of the cards that you're given for war. And then you can also cons know that you can potentially consider upgrading a card to then help meet that. Then you got to remember three is know the typical types of cards that you need in a deck. So one to two spells, one building and three ground troops and two cards that will at least attack air as well. And then from there, it's just remembering what cards am I good with and incorporating those as well. And then my last step, and this is absolutely crucial, step six, because if you don't do this one, all step one through five basically becomes useless is practice. Practice, practice, practice. And what I suggest is practice about four to five times. Honestly, every war, I almost do it. I know it takes a bit of time, but you know what? If I need to break them up, I'll do two practices here, three later, or I'll do them all at once. And the reason for it is when you build a deck, one, you know how to use it. You know how to use it against other people in your clan who have different decks. So it gives you good practice and you're getting used to them or getting used to how to counter with those cards. But not only that, it then also allows you to find weaknesses in your deck. 
And I've done that a lot. Honestly, in the first one to two practice matches, I noticed, okay, here's a weak card. Here's something that I'm missing. So you know what? In that case, it was the tombstone for me. I dropped that in, made a big difference. And then after battle two, I got into battle three, and I'm like, you know what? I'm missing an offensive push. I can't just rely on the prince. I threw the e-barbs in there. And then, you know what, there at that point, I started winning deck after deck of practice match. And I'm like, okay, you know what, now is my chance. This is what I do for war. I know how to use, I know how to counter against these. And that is step six. And those six steps will make a big difference in helping you. So you know what, actually, I can just show you quickly. For this one, it wasn't actually too much of options for me as far as deck-wise goes. So I really tried to stick with the Prince, the barbs because they're fast, Dark Goblin. And the next executioner with the Tornado combo is also uh, tried and true. And uh, it's worked well with me. But otherwise, we have like a lot of big kind of high elixir cards like the Giant, the uh, Giant Skeleton, your Lava Hound as well. You got like your Musketeers, three Musketeers here. You got Golem. Uh, you got the Night Witch combo in behind, and honestly, I'm not really great with uh, those cards. I can pull them off and I can win, but my percentage of winning goes way up when I use the cards in my style. So let's go uh, back to this and show you my replay recently of War, which was this match right here. So let's take a look at that, and it'll show you the fruits of my labor and me making my deck. So let's get into this. Come on, computer. Stop being so slow. Wow, I need a new one. Alright, at least the quality is decent enough on Clash Royale. I got that 720p for you guys. So, here's the beginning. You can do good luck, thumbs up. Hopefully he responds. Nope. Oh, oh, okay, buddy. Okay, Carlitos. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have to crush you now. That's the only way. And as you can see on with his cards on the other side, you see he has a Golem Executioner combo. And as soon as I saw that Ice Spirit drop down, I dropped those E-Barbs because I knew that he was going to maybe do like a Ice Golem Hog Push, and that's what I tried to expect. So I dropped him on the other side to hopefully then force him to cost Elixir and defend, which worked well because he had to waste the Executioner and the Goblin Army, and at that point I capitalized with my Executioner and my Knight as well, because then the Knight takes the damage over the Executioner. Now I have them pushing the other way, and you're going to see me wait a little bit, wait a little bit, I see the Hog, then you're going to see me drop that Dark Goblin, because then I want to make sure that Hog doesn't get to that tower. And now you're going to see the Prince come in behind, because I knew I had a little bit of an Elixir uh, drop on him, and I had that Dark Goblin coming behind, and this is where I do damage. Fast-paced cards working well for me right now. I'm gonna let those uh, bats do their thing, and boom, one tower is down. And the elixir, I actually have an advantage again, as you can see right now. So we're gonna stock up a little bit, see what he does, just to keep an eye on it. Waiting, waiting, and you're gonna see me soon drop those e-barbs. Boom. So he's gonna drop the uh, the goblin army, which I'm going to use the tornado because I know I can at least destroy them and get a little bit of damage. Boom, right there. I'm actually surprised he didn't drop the golem there. Probably would have been a better combo, but he wouldn't really have had much to back up the golem otherwise, and I, he needed a push, especially being one tower down. So you see that golem get dropped. He starts to do the push. I knew I was a little bit down on elixir, so I just wanted to back it up. Boom, drop that tombstone. Just like I said, works well in the golem and the P.E.K.K.A. to drag it at that point. So what I do is I wait. Wait, C drops the Executioner, going to drop my Executioner, start to do some damage, and you're going to see me wait a little bit more, and now I drop the Knight there for the Executioner to take damage on her instead of on mine, and Tornado, boom. Now you get that deadly combo of Dark Goblin with Executioner, and you see all those troops go down. Now I've got the counter, drop that Knight, going to see me go there, Executioner and Dark Goblin coming in behind. Drop the execution there. I wanted to keep that push so he didn't get that golem back up, especially with so much time left. So you're going to see me drop more, get that dark goblin, does a bit of damage. Executioner's going to get some as well. And then you're going to see me, boom, drop tombstone. Like I said, guys, one building works great for covering uh, hog, for uh, giant P.E.K.K.A. The inferno tower is great for that as well. Now i got a counter push, especially with that dark goblin in behind. Going to drop those... Uh, uh, <laughs> drop the prince down, then drop the executioner and make sure I take out that corner. I really wanted to get that tower down, especially with every crown matters in war. Drop those e-barbs there. Gonna try and drop that fireball as well. Didn't matter, got that tower down. Would have been a little late with the fireball, and that's how I did it. 
And as you can see, the deck for me absolutely overwhelmed and destroyed him because I didn't take any damage more than 2300 on one of the towers. And honestly, I can't really ask for much more than that. Uh, and that's how it is. So I don't want to drink this out too long uh, or any more than I have to. Hopefully those six steps help you in picking a war deck. And hopefully you get a greater win percentage as a result of that. So uh, like I said uh, at the end of every video, if uh, this video helped you, don't forget to like the video as well down below. If you uh, want to see future videos like this, don't forget to subscribe, share with your friend, and uh, just thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I got more videos dropping. Every Thursday is going to be a Clash of Clans video, and every Tuesday around is going to be a Clash Royal video, and that's going to be weekly. So all I can say is this is going to be Leonidas signing off. Thanks, guys.